Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Kopetsky, a preventive cardiologist at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. If the next few minutes, we'll be talking in our lipid series about statin intolerance, what specific symptoms can occur, and how do we manage it. I'll start with a case, a 54-year-old man, no coronary disease symptoms or diagnoses, known hyperlipidemia on simvastatin 20 milligrams per day for the last two months, and he noticed increasing morning stiffness. One morning, couldn't get out of bed due to muscle pain and stiffness. What should you advise the patient? See a rheumatologist for evaluation of rheumatoid arthritis, like the patient thought he had, stop the simvastatin, give him CoQ10, do a genetic test for statin intolerance to simvastatin, or switch to atorvastatin 10 milligrams per day. The recommendation, of course, is stop the simvastatin for about a month, see how their symptoms do. Full disclosure, I am statin intolerant to all approved generic statins, unfortunately. What are statins? Well, the HMG reductase inhibitors, and statin intolerance is defined as the inability to get an LDL to goal due to statin side effects. And that's important because patients with statin intolerance have about a 50% higher incidence of major adverse cardi cardiac events than patients who are statin adherent. So it does make a difference in the outcomes to the patient. Statin intolerance manifestations, there's non-muscle and muscle. For the non-muscle, liver can be an issue. It usually occurs within the first six weeks. It's reversible. Check liver function tests the first time you check lipids, and it doesn't, you don't need to check it again after that if it's the same dose. Memory, there's no demonstrated memory side effects. Diabetes does seem to occur in patients that are predisposed to diabetes that have metabolic syndrome or elevated fasting blood sugar or A1C. And what does seem to occur is that the diabetes occurs about three months earlier on the statin than if they weren't on it. But for every one new diabetic, there's five MIs prevented. The major, or about 90% of the symptoms we see are myalgias, however. They're proximal, they're bilateral, they're achiness, stiffness, some cramps occasionally. And randomized clinical trials, anywhere from 1% to 5% uh, had statin intolerance. But remember, they were excluded from the early trials. They, uh, if they also baseline myalgia was excluded, or history of myopathy in the patient or family was excluded. And observational consecutive patients, anywhere from 15 to 20 percent, seem to have statin intolerance. In the adherence to statin therapy, uh, if uh, this is a very large database, over three million uh, patients, if they are have known coronary disease, about two thirds of the patients uh, take at least 80 percent of their pills. And if they don't have coronary disease, only a third to take them, and it doesn't matter if they have diabetes or not. So without a diagnosis of coronary disease, adherence to statins is generally pretty poor. Now, why don't patients take them? There are logistical issues, about a quarter of patients. There are side effect issues, either they have them or they're worried about having them. But overwhelmingly, uh, it's lifestyle. Patients say, I'd like to do this on my own, doctor, to lower my cholesterol. Can you help me with that? Now, when we look at patients uh, in further subgroups like primary prevention or secondary prevention, uh, the reasons patients don't take a statin in the primary prevention is overwhelmingly because they want to do it on their own with diet and alternative therapies. Uh, if it's secondary prevention, they're more worried about side effects, uh, diet, and uh, other things like they think they don't need them or don't like to take medications. That's always a significant portion of patients also. So there's been a lot of studies out recently. Uh, one just came out uh, on looking at statin intolerance in, in myalgias primarily, and does it exist? Now, if you define statin intolerance as you stop the drug and the symptoms resolve, and that should be 100%, they go away if they're due to the statin. You restart the drug, they should get the exact same symptoms back. You start a placebo, they get return of symptoms. And if they're able to tolerate some statin dose, it's really not known. Uh, but in general, you think they couldn't, but maybe some statin they could. But in actuality, if you look in, uh, now in, in actual patients in blinded fashion, only about 25% of the time does the symptoms completely go away. It'll lessen in about three quarters of patients. If you restart the drug, only about half the patients in double blind fashion get the same, exact same symptoms back. And if you start a placebo, at least 25% of patients will get the exact same symptoms back on placebo. In actuality, about 75% of the time, you can get a patient on some dose of some statin, maybe less than daily, but they can certainly get on something. 
So the problem is there's no gold standard for statin intolerance. We can't do a echo like you can for aortic stenosis or do a troponin like we do for a heart attack. There's just no absolute way to predict this is or is not statin intolerance. So what are the patient risk factors? We divide them up into history, lab, and drugs. The history, think of the little old lady, 80-year-old woman who has a low BMI. Uh, she's more likely to get statin intolerant. People that are vigorously active, as I'll show you, are more likely. If there's a family history of muscle disease or statin intolerance, it's more likely. If they have fibromyalgia, it's almost impossible to get a patient on daily statins with fibromyalgia that's severe. Uh, excess alcohol and certainly any other stressors can, can unmask statin intolerance. Uh, labs, if they have a high CK to start or they're untreated low thyroid or untreated low vitamin D, they're more likely. And then there's concomitant drug-drug interactions that can certainly be an issue. The, if you look at physical exercise, it does seem to affect statin intolerance. These were, this was a German study of 22 professional athletes at high levels of athletic activity. Multiple types of athletes, as you can see on the right, they were started on statins. They were, it was not a blinded study. And they stopped the statin and the, and the symptoms went away when they stopped it. But overall, over three quarters of professional athletes can't tolerate any statin. I have patients that run the marathons and have to stop the statin a few weeks in advance, six or eight weeks, so they can, their times are a little slower when they're on a statin and then restart it when they uh, finish their race. Other factors are uh, the, uh, the, that are more based on the treatment are things like the dose of statin. That's the biggest predictor. The higher the dose, the more likely you get statin intolerance. There's cytochrome P450 pathway interactions. I've underlined the ones we use a lot in cardiology, like amiodarone, fibrates, nicotinic acids, niacin, verapamil, and warfarin. They all can play a role. The thing that everyone should be aware of is that the FDA has come out a few years ago and said no simvastatin with these drugs, uh, or not over 10 milligrams of simvastatin if they're on amiodarone, verapamil, or diltiazem, and not over 20 milligrams if they're on amlodipine or vanolazine. So pretty much I haven't written a new simvastatin uh, prescription in years. The other thing that's come along is genetic testing. The SLCO1B1 gene uh, can encodes for hepatic uptake of statins. There was a lot of uh, press about this a few years ago, but overall the, that genetic testing is not predictive of statin intolerance. The study we did here, what we did find was that if you have uh, Gilbert syndrome, the UGT1A1 allele, then you actually had a protective effect. You didn't have as much statin intolerance. So overall, genetic testing is not clinically useful for, especially now that the statins are generic. There are multiple mechanisms of action of statin intolerance, and I think that's the issue. Uh, it can be genetic. It can be CoQ10 alteration. Almost everybody that goes on a statin has a reduction in CoQ10 levels, which is used for mitochondrial energy production. There can be cytochrome P450 interactions. We're all different there. And then mitochondrial dysfunction at baseline, which gets worse with statins. Environmentally, it's issues, uh, the ones we can change, things like medication. Always look for the effects of medications. Uh, look in the micromedics or whatever your, your uh, electronic health record uh, drug interaction file is. And maybe change a medication because that can affect the serum levels. Uh, look for vitamin D deficiency. That's especially important for us in Minnesota. Um, with the reduced sunlight in the winter, 25% of us are vitamin D deficient. And that reduces the, uh, the vitamin D levels, then reduces the ability of the proteins uh, to repair in the muscle. And then finally, the CoQ10 levels. And this is a somewhat controversial area. The CoQ10 isn't really indicated in guidelines to, as a first-line treatment but it does reduce mitochondrial ATP, and a lot of patients come in on Q10, uh, on CoQ10. So if you look at some CoQ10 meta-analyses, and a couple of have come out, you can see that, um, that one uh, meta-analysis showed that there was benefit, one showed there wasn't. And it's, and it's interesting because uh, this, uh, these studies, they actually looked at some of the same uh, studies in their meta-analyses, and they had different uh, results or different um, effects from the same study. They, they had uh, looked at certain parts of the data. But what is clear is that um, CoQ10 levels go down, and it's clear that if a patient knows that they're on CoQ10, they, there's benefit. They feel better. So what I do tell them when they want to take CoQ10, take ubiquinol, that's a reduced form, which is better absorbed, 
versus ubiquinone, which is uh, also sold over the, and these are both sold over the counter, and they're very safe drugs to take. I ask patients if they want to take it, take it for about three months, and if it does help, great. If it doesn't, then get off it, because it's not going to help you uh, after three months. Does patient's knowledge predict statin uh, adherence? It, it, it does. People with high cholesterol are more likely to have a heart attack or a stroke. They need to know that. They need to know statins are effective and that statins are safe. And also, I tell them they're the boss. If they start to have side effects, stop it and call me later, and we'll talk about next steps. What has been shown is that there's a variable response to statins. And you can see on this graph that some patients, their statin uh, therapy will actually increase their LDL. But clearly, the ones that have the most LDL reduction get the most reduction in uh, cardiac events. And that's very important for the patients to know that. How do we handle statin intolerance? Uh, discontinue the statin for four weeks. The majority should have symptom improvement. If they do improve, um, stop the meds with, um, with a possible interaction. Try other statins. Try CoQ10 if the patient you know, brings it to you or brings it up. If they don't improve, then it wasn't the statin, and you can restart the statin. Check vitamin D levels. Look for thyroid. Make sure it's okay. Uh, if they remain asymptomatic, then keep them on it. Um, then uh, maybe add azetamibe at some point. If they get the same symptoms back, unable to tolerate at least two statins on daily doses, then try resuvastatin, 5 milligrams Sunday night for about three months. Recheck lipids. Uh, maybe increase it, or we're more and more frequently just adding in azetamibe very early on because you get a much more reduction, a 20-25% reduction when you add the azetamibe versus doubling the statin dose, you only get about a 6 or 7% reduction. Alternative therapies are very important. Patients always ask about them. Stanols, sterols, oat bran, and psyllium, uh, that can give about a 12% reduction on its own, just eating differently and lowering the saturated animal fats in the diet can certainly help. So how do we treat them? Stop the statins for a month, change the medication. Supplements sometimes can help, especially if their vitamin D level is low. Uh, substances to lower cholesterol, like azetamibe, is, I think of it as a statin sparing agent. Alternative therapies are very helpful, and dietary change can be beneficial. But remember, every person is different. So the key points, statin intolerance is real, especially in the mind of the patient, and that's who we have to take care of. Patient knowledge and beliefs are key. They have to understand that cholesterol is a culprit for causing atherosclerosis and cardiac events, that there is no genetic test to predict. Always consider concomitant meds, consider low thyroid, consider low vitamin D. If you suspect statin intolerance, have them stop it for a month, wash out and see how they feel. CoQ10, the double-blind randomized trials, do not support it, but it can be helpful, especially if a patient brings it to you, as they often do. And if they're intolerant for to, to two statins, try once a week resuvastatin on five milligrams on Sunday night, recheck lipids in three months, then add azetamibe 10 milligrams or increase the statin dose. Thank you for your attention. Good day.